Uh, the Arsenal boss, Mikel Arteta, speaking to TalkSports, Alex Crook said it was important for his side to recover and pick up those three points. That's because it's three points in the Premier League is really tough and every time you hear them you are so happy uh, but uh, not for the other part because we are in September and it's only the sixth game and uh, we know that uh, the journey is going to be really, really long. So, Cass, let's look back on that result then. As I mm. mentioned, Arsenal, um, what, 2-0 up? at uh, yep. half a time after goals from Gabriel Martinelli and Leandro Trossard but then Leicester got off to a fine start by, uh, in the second half with James Justin getting both of their goals to get it back to 2-2 at that point the travelling Leicester fans would have thought this is great looking at, get down and out at, yeah. at the break and then they've somehow got themselves back into it but it's that old, it's the old classic line of you've got to play to the whistle, you've got to play, uh, and it's not over until the fat lady sings, etc., etc. And that's what we saw with Arsenal scoring those two late, yeah. late goals. I mean, that's the measure of a great side that then they're not out of it until, as I say, that final whistle. Yeah, one thing is pretty clear the hunger and yes, desire of Arsenal is extraordinary. I mean, yeah. For this team, it's like, it feels like, and I referenced this a few times when the Chicago Bulls who had needed to win the championship under Michael Jordan and watch the last dance. And they were just absolutely ferocious the way they played in certain games. Then their battle, they, they got in a bit of a rivalry with the, uh, with the Pistons, Detroit Pistons, mm-hmm. is it? Is it Detroit Pistons? Mm. And, and, and the way that team literally fought tooth and nail for everything in a season, that's what the Bulls did. And Arsenal remind me of that, of a team that just will... Every blade of grass, every yeah. bit of sweat, blood they're going to give to try and win this title. It's, I mean, it's frustrating, isn't it, for Leicester to have got themselves mm. back into... I mean, there are some positives, of course, you can take from that. 2 nil down, you get it back to 2-2. Two, two. Again, perhaps a lot of people wouldn't have even considered Leicester getting anything out of this game. So to get it back to 2-2, two, two, you head into stoppage time, you're thinking, just hang on. Hang on as much as you can to get yeah. a precious point because of the way that Leicester's season has started. Um and then you get the joy of Arsenal scoring two goals in that stoppage time as well. Um, I mentioned the positives for Leicester. Can they take any positives from it? Well, they've broken down a very, very strong defence. Arsenal's back line yeah. is really hard to break down. That's true. And yeah. I mean, lad Justin who scored, James Justin who scored, got a brace. I mean, his second was a wonder goal, wasn't it? It was a great strike. Um, so... Yeah, it's frustrating, but I just think there's a real drive at Arsenal where they are just fighting for everything and don't be surprised with late goals with them. Mm. I mean, Trossard is such a vital player, although he could be in and out the team. He's one of them that always seems to have an assist or score a goal. He does it r- so often. You know, he could Martinelli could play in front of him, and, but if he's called on, he's got something about him that just goes... He's going to do something. And he does it regularly. He's not the quickest. He's not the most gifted. He's not, uh, you know, the, the biggest physically. But he's absolutely has an uh, ability to affect a game somehow. He, he reminds me of, of a better version of Wiltord. When Arsenal had Wiltord hmm. uh, uh, at the club, he was one of them type of players. He could get a vital goal for you. And he wasn't in Arsenal's great 11 of Perez or Burkamp and Henri. Hmm. But Wiltord always contributed mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. to the team. And he reminds me of that, that that time when Arsenal won the league. I think Will Todd scored the goals at Old Trafford, that won them a game 1-0. He's, he's that sort of player for me, uh, Trossard, that's going to be really important to them across the season because he does, he does this sort of thing regularly, gets a big goal or a big assist. And in terms of that, Playing to the to the to the end of the game to that to that final whistle and scoring those two stoppage time goals. Having seen City drop points at Newcastle earlier on as well, just how important is that confidence wise for Arsenal going forward? Yeah, I think it's huge. There's a there's a belief there. What happened last year can drive you into the next season. They come they come second, and it's right. What's the next step for Arsenal? You know, what they lose the uh, title by? Two points, Nat, wasn't it? At the end of last season, I think it was two points. You know, so there's a... We're talking about a real small margin for Arsenal to make. And you could look at the final games, the games they lost at the end of the season, they lost at the Emirates. You know, Villa was a damaging one for them. You know, they went to Villa Park and won this year already. They are a side that we all know are going to be fighting for the title. Mm. That's clear. They're fighting for the title, Arsenal. 
Can they get over the line? I, I watch as a team, the, they, if you said to me the hungriest team, and, and yes, they're being accused of dark arts and doing things, to, but this team's going to do anything to try and win the league. Mm. And, and I mean with a lot of courage as well because they, they're going to push the boat in every level. And I think Arteta um, knows that he's got a, a special group of players that are going to give absolutely everything in every day of every training session and when they play matches. The dark arts, obviously, we know was a big thing that was spoken about after that City result. Um, I mean, it's not a problem, is it? Every team does it. No. Oh, some of the best teams that have ever played the game have done it. Mm. Yeah, no, it's not a problem. Um, it's for other teams to make sure that they don't fall over against them. And the Man City game was a great game for many ways, you know, because it showed Arsenal's resilience with 10 men. And yes, you can make the point, well, yeah, City still scored two. But there, yeah, I can't imagine a hard team to play against with 10 men than Man City in yeah. world football. Yeah. Because how they play. One other positive you can also mention is the performance of the Leicester goalkeeper, Mads Hermansen. He made 12 saves mm. in the game. Now, I know they conceded four, so that in some ways you can say, well, that's a negative. But to pull off 12 saves against an Arsenal yes. side who are challenging at the top end of the table, for himself... You'd like to think that'll give him a little bit of a boost. Well, there's one for you as well, adding, adding to what I said about Arsenal, is that Kai Havertz, one thing that Chelsea fans were a little bit... They felt he was a little bit lackadaisical. They knew he was a talent and he could make moments happen, but they weren't quite... They felt he was a bit soft as a player. He's not that Arsenal. He feels like he's hardened up there, mm. Kai Havertz. Mm, he's become... Mm. His job in the game against Man City, where he ended up playing literally in midfield and defending... He didn't get any shots on target. He didn't do anything offens offensively at all in the game. But he dug deep to make sure Arsenal didn't lose the game. Um, um, yeah. And Kai Havertz is a guy that I'm sure when Arsenal fans got first got him, it's like, he's paid a lot of money for a player at Chelsea. Oh, that, raised eyebrows. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of Chelsea fans were quite, quite say, quite happy for, well, it's not the biggest loss in the world, losing mm -hmm. Kai Havertz. And he's become... Typified, sort of typified what I'm talking about. He's become hardened at Arsenal, and he's also feeling like he's going to give absolute. I'm sure some Chelsea fans are thinking, "I wish he'd have tried so hard for us as it is for them." <laughs> Isn't it funny about players that have left a club with, like the Havertz situation at Chelsea, and you sort of think, "Oh, that's an odd move to Arsenal," but fair enough. Similar, we a few eyebrows are raised with Cole Palmer moving from City yeah. to Chelsea. My goodness. Wow, they've well, both hit the ground. Well, they've both done really, really well at their respective clubs, haven't they? They've done brilliantly. Um, look, let's take a break. When we return, we will continue to look back on yesterday's action, in particular focusing on some of the key stories from the EFL. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.